Hey what's up guys, Brad here, so the other day I posted a video talking about some of the best cards and archetypes you could find in Legacy of the Duelist Link Evolution's extremely convoluted card shop, and a ton of you guys found that video really useful, so today I'm back with yet another guide, though other content is coming soon, I do promise that, that focuses on the challenge mode aspect of the game, and what high rarity cards that might usually take you thousands of DP to actually get multiple copies of, you can obtain from which duelists. Honestly, a lot of the challenge mode decks in this game suck and aren't really a challenge, like if you take a look at Kaiba's or Arcana's decks, I'm pretty sure that the epic Yugi event in Duel Links had a more challenging damage deck with it, so that's kind of the uh, level of challenge you're kind of going to be getting in this game. There's so much more potential they could have gone down here with new archetype support they don't seem to use, and honestly, it seems like the best decks are in Arc 5, and even those the majority of the time aren't challenging enough. But before we get into that, two announcements. First up, a big thank you to Willow124 for becoming a brand new channel member. As always, I really do appreciate the support on these videos, especially the Link Evolution ones. And becoming a channel member really does help out to offset the crappy CPM YouTube has for Link Evolution videos. So big thank you once again. Also, if you want, we have a Discord server which has been quite active recently thanks to all the new Link Evolution players. So come over there, come hang out. Link in the description down below. Additionally, and this is in conjunction with this video, I have a brand new website with a tool on it that will let you see all the cards available in challenge mode from each duelist, as well as search the card pool to see if it's available in challenge mode altogether. So, for example, if you wanted, say, Ash Blossom and Joy Spring, you would search that card and then get back every duelist that has it in their deck as well as what series they're in so you know exactly where to find them. Alternatively, you could look up the cards available in a certain duelist's deck before you face them. So let's say you wanted to go against Yu Sakaki, you could then search him up, and then you'll see that he is running a ton of Pendulum Magician rare cards, and you can prioritize what duelists you face depending on the decks you're trying to build, or just get an advantage on your opponent to see what they're playing against. So um, hopefully you guys find that useful, and again, link to that down below as well. But with that out of the way, let's get into the video looking at some of the best decks in general that you should be farming to get the most value out of, either because of the deck's cores available that make them extremely good, or because of the value of their rare cards. So first up is Vetrix, who pretty much has every Necros card you'll ever need, He's going to be a really good player to go to to get all of your Necros of Bryanac, Trishla, all those kind of things. Then we have Chancellor Shepard who has literally every Kaiju under the sun. So Vetrix was the uh, the god of Necros, Shepard is the god of Kaijus, so if you want to be trooping your opponent's monsters or playing Crusadia, you're going to need to go into his deck to actually uh, get some of these uh, Kaiju cards. Then we have Blue Angel who obviously has a pretty decent starting Trickstar core and some pretty powerful trap cards as well, things like Rivalry of Warlords, Solemn Strike, she's a pretty good deck to uh, actually farm overall. Then we have Yu Sakaki who, as we said before, has Pendulum Magicians, which, you know, probably you're going to want to start here. Although the deck ha does have like some banned cards like Astrograph and Double Iris Magician, it's still a very easy way to get a bunch of those Pendulum Magician cards and other things like Pot of Desires, so if you're struggling to get it from a pack, just get it from his deck instead. Yuri's pack pretty much has an invoked core, which would be really good. Aside from the Link Monster Alice the Invoker, which you do need to get from Zuzu's pack, he also has nearly every hand trap imaginable. So he's just a good duelist to go up against anyway, just to farm, just for those hand traps. But if you want to play invoked, this is the guy to go to. Silvio Sawatari has a 2016 Monarch core, which is really, really good, and all the necessary spell and trap card support for that deck. So a very good duelist to farm once again. If you're a fan of Duel Links, Lulu has a fur hired deck core, as well as a few good staple main and side deck cards in here as well, so definitely one you should check out and um, it might be fun to play for hires in a non Duel Links setting with a bunch of brand new cards that you've never seen before. Again, of course, the Link Monster that you'll have to find that from the booster pack, respectively. And finally, Kite Tender's Arc 5 Challenge has a Burning Abyss core. Now, I'm 300 packs or 300 cards like into the pack where you get them in, and I still haven't seen Farfa. And Beatrice and this deck I got them in my first kind of farming attempt so um definitely a good one to go for there's a bunch of other really cool cards here as well like Card of Demise and Twin Twisters so a very good deck to kind of go into and that's kind of my top picks for the decks you should go into because of like the deck core specifically. Now onto the important cards you should be looking to get your hands on and this list was compiled based on the fact that cards are just good in general and ones that people in the comment section of my videos have actually been asking for that I haven't been able to reply to saying, hey it's in this pack, hey it's in that pack, 
you'll be able to find them in here. So um, let's go through these all real quick. So Pod of Desires, that's available from Yu Yu Sakaki's deck. Solemn Strike is available from Lulu, Blue Angel and Officer 227's Challenge Mode. Rivalry of the Warlords, that's available again from Blue Angel and Jack Alice's Arc 5 Duel. Ash Blossom and Joy Spring, that's available from Yuri, Lulu and Chojuro Tokamatsu. Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit, you can get that from Valen, Crow Hogan, Lulu and Yuri. Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries, that's available only from Chojuro Tokamatsu. Effect Veiler, that's available from Yuri, Kit Blade and Tyranno Hasselberry. Droll and Lockbird is also available from Yuri. Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon, that's available from Yugo. Cyframe Lord Omega, that's available from Valen. Brilliant Fusion, that's going to be available from the Sledgehammer, so one of the earliest decks you unlock. Tornado Dragon, that's going to be available from Moonshadow. Mist Valley Apex Avion, again from Moonshadow and also Nelson Andrews and Zexel. Instant Fusion, that's going to be available from Trey, Dennis, Julia and Shay in Arc 5, so a ton of players there that actually have that card. Chojuro Tokamatsu again has Uni Zombie. Lulu has Reasoning. Card of Demise can be found from Jack Alice's Arc 5 Duel, Kite Tendro's Arc 5 Duel, and Jean Michel Roger. Twin Twist is another popular card, is going to be available from Yugi Muto, Alexis Rhodes, Crow Hogan's Arc 5 Duel, Dennis McField, Kite Tendro's Arc 5 Duel, Obelisk Force, and Officer 227, all in Arc 5, so really, really cool there. Fairy Tale Snow is available from Dipper Orion, and finally, Naturia Beast, that's going to be available from Garag and Ray Shadows over in Zexel. So what's the best way of farming these guys? Well, you've really got two options, either by playing them as per usual and winning to get three cards and you're getting roughly 1700 to 1900 DP at a time, or just look up the duel and instantly surrender, that'll get you one card and roughly six to 700 duel points at a time. The first one you can actually do pretty quickly if you build like an Exodia FTK deck like I have been doing, and you just keep drawing through your deck into the pieces. But if you're needing to like practice a deck anyway, you might as well just keep grinding out and getting the duel normally and getting the 900 DP and the three cards and just getting more practice in with your deck. So um, really it's it's whether you want to be completely bored to death or whether you want to be completely bored to death but also practice a deck. So uh, definitely a grind game for getting these cards. And that is it. So this is going to be a very, very short video, which means that on YouTube it's going to make absolutely no money. So if you enjoy this video, feel free to leave a like, it really does help out, leave a comment if you want to become a channel member, again that really does help out these videos, and also please check out the website and let me know your thoughts on it, I know if it's slow I apologise, it's on some free hosting right now, but if it gets you know good enough traction and stuff then I'll definitely upgrade that and invest into that a little bit, so um, really do appreciate it, thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next Link Evolution video, see you then. Okay, that's all the time I've got. I gotta get back to playing Legacy of the Duelist on my Nintendo Switch. Cool.